what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on another fundamental topic in astrology which is known as badaks badak planets for every ascendant yes every ascendant has a badak badak means obstruction badha as they say which means that which hinders the progress of the ascendant okay if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you have any other questions queries or comments regarding this video or if you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comments okay and if you want a personal consultation then approach me in my website and as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you overcome the effects of the badak planets for your ascendant <laughs> all right so now what technically is the meaning of badaks badaks refer to refers to those planets which obstruct the ascendant yes which means every sign has a badak not only every ascendant okay because everybody has all the 12 signs in their horoscope so for every house for every zodiac sign they have a badak but when we say badak we generally refer to the badak from the lagna itself all right the planet that obstructs the functioning of the lagna now there's a lot there are a lot of misconceptions about this word badak just like there are misconceptions about the uh word marakas okay they don't understand what marak is basically i made videos on the marak houses please go and watch that if you have not watched and then also there are a lot of misconceptions about this word uh, badak now technically badak means anything which obstructs the flow yes so now let's see who are the badaks for the different ascendants let's make it into three categories for the movable ascendants which is the signs 1 4 7 10 which means aries cancer libra and capricorn the 11th house not the 11th house that's the mistake people do it's the sign in the 11th house okay people say oh 11th house is badak for the libra ascendants no it's not like that the sign in the 11th house the zodiac sign in the 11th house is the badak do you understand that also the planet ruling the 11th house that also can be a badak but primarily we have to be concerned with the sign not with the house well if that is the case then uh, for uh cancer ascendants for aries and for libra and for the capricorn ascendants if you say 11th house is the badak that means what they should not have friends <laughs> no that is not the case the sign in the 11th house will tell us which are the badaks okay what is the characteristics of that uh, uh planet and what are the characteristics of the badaks what which and how they obstruct the lagna yes now this will hold true for aries ascendants why because for aries in the 11th house the sign of aquarius falls which is also the sign of friends because for aries the house and sign becomes the same now for aries why are friends the root cause of obstruction because aries represents the sign where the sun gets exalted yes and that means aries ascendants have to be very firm and very fixed to their purpose in life if they are not having any goal in life and they are simply going around here they are asking friends talking to friends enjoying partying then their lives will be destroyed because the planet which gets exalted in their sign the planet sun they are not using the traits of that planet yes so for them the 11th house is not only the 11th house it is also the house of friends because the sign aquarius falls in that yes and for them the sign aquarius becomes badak because it is there in the 11th house that means aries ascendants should not focus too much on their friends yes they should focus on what they want to do in life irrespective of what their friends is okay suppose today i want to chant this mantra if there is an aries ascendant and the friend says oh we are going to goa we are going to paris we are going to hawaii <laughs> for party let's go hawaii or where or i don't know what that place is <laughs> so then if you sit and you listen to them that means it's not going to work yes because aries is that it's like that goat which keeps going from here going to there 
yes so if you keep listening to what uh, your friends are telling then it's not going to work out you will be in terrible distress all the time that doesn't mean you cannot have friends but be very careful any ascendants when you roam with friends be very careful because they can mislead you then we have cancer ascendant movable ascendant yes and for cancer we have the sign taurus which is bada yes now the question is why is <laughs> the uh, sign taurus becoming a bada for cancer ascendants because now see there is a there's this precarious state <laughs> which cancer ascendants and leo ascendants have that the sign where the lagnesh gets exalted yes that sign itself becomes bada which means even for leo ascendants because leo is a fixed sign the ninth house is bada which means the sign aries for leo is bada yes which means aries is the sign where sun gets exalted just like moon gets exalted in taurus yes which is the 11th house for a cancer that means the king and queen when they become too much obsessed with their power <laughs> with their strength then that leads to their downfall yes now this does not mean that if moon is sitting in taurus for a cancer ascendant that is bad it doesn't mean that it simply means that the traits of taurus which is too much luxury yes too much sexuality all those things have to be kept under control yes we have to check that we are not too much indulging in all those then what happens is we will lose our mental peace which is the sign of cancer yes although we have to run behind the aspects of taurus which represent stability and the same time if we go behind things which are on the level of scorpio where moon gets debilitated those things will also give us trouble because then the lagna lord is going in debilitation which means you are going after things which are not having stability in life yes but on the same time on the other hand because that is also a badak sign we have to be careful that we do not indulge too much in luxuries then what happens is we will have trouble and moon also represents the public yes social service and all this so taurus represents family so if all the time you are thinking of family then you can't do much social service cancer ascendants and that's the classic example for lord ram that when Uh, lord ram is a cancer ascendant and when he went away from his family he got so much name fame and success now this does not mean that taurus ascendants uh, uh, sorry cancer ascendants should not have family it simply means that they should their whole life purpose should not become uh, regarding their family yes they should also do things for other people that is what is the meaning of the sign taurus which is badhak and also the exaltation <laughs> it is very difficult to understand why this happens the only reason is for the king and the queen for leo and cancer if they become too much obsessed which means they are exalted <laughs> they run into badha which means they become the cause of their own downfall yes now we have libra ascendants libra ascendants you have the sign leo in your 11th house yes that means libra means market <laughs> when you are trying to do deals negotiations yes and what is sun sun is ruling the sign leo and leo says no it is either my way or highway so if you behave like the son of leo sign of leo when you are a libra ascendant then you cannot go on the go to the market because when you go to the market you have to negotiate yes that means you have to be very careful that you do not bring the traits of leo into your life libra ascendants then you will be in serious trouble <laughs> which means if you try to force too much of your authority yes this does not mean that you should roam like a headless being that oh i don't know anything i will not listen to what anybody i will not listen to myself i'll do only what i will only do what others says no i am not saying that but when you become too much forceful when you become too much aggressive which is what leo when you become stubborn basically stubbornness comes from the sign of leo then you cannot be a libra ascendant properly because libra represents negotiations deals contracts so imagine you a libra ascendant is going to sign a contract with somebody yes and then only thing you are doing and saying is no no what i am saying will only happen i don't care what you want yes so that means the deal will not be signed <laughs> then we have capricorn ascendants for capricorn again because it's a movable sign we have the 11th house as the badak and for capricorn 11th house has which sign it has the sign number 8 right scorpio now scorpio is the 
8th house originally which is the gain of the 7th house which means resources of other people 7th house is other people and 2nd house is resources so resources of other people is the sign of Scorpio because that's what represents inheritance right now for Capricorn what happens is Capricorn is the original 10th house which means you are supposed to work yes but now instead of working when you only look to what other people are getting yes then you can't work because you will always have this feeling of jealousy because Scorpio is the sign of jealousy yes eighth house is the sign of jealousy because that is where moon gets debilitated imagine when you are jealous of somebody your mental peace is in complete ruins have you had the experience <laughs> Maybe everybody, including me and so many, everybody perhaps, yes, we have been jealous of somebody at some point of uh, li our life, yes. In some day, in some moment, we have been jealous of somebody. And imagine the situation of your mind that time. Yes, that is why moon gets debilitated there. And when Capricorn ascendants, instead of working, which is the original 10th house, instead of focusing on your career, instead of focusing on your work, when you are the only thing you are doing is you are saying oh that person got a raise of 10 person oh he has got uh, that girl i could not uh, get a girl like her na? her boyfriend is a billionaire my husband uh, my boyfriend or my husband is only a millionaire my god my life is in ruins then you'll be destroyed <laughs> so jealousy has to be kept far away for capricorn ascendants don't think what others are getting all right then we have the fixed ascendants which are the fixed ascendants we have taurus then leo then scorpio and then we have aquarius 2 5 8 11. now for these ascendants the ninth house no no not the ninth house the sign in the ninth house becomes the badak all right so as i said for leo what happens for leo aries is the badak yes that means when the king becomes exalted yes or to put it this way when the king becomes too much obsessed then he becomes a dictator when he says i will do this irrespective of what you want now the king has to do that you see the predicament is the king the lagna lord gets exalted there which means the king has to be strong on the other hand if the king says no no i will just do what you want you tell me now you don't like this law okay i will change it then the king will be destroyed because then the Sun will go to Libra, which is the third house. Yes, where it just listens to other people. And then he's like, oh, what should I do? I don't know. But simultaneously, like Cancer, the ninth house for Leo is also the Badhak. Which means if you become too much obsessed with that, then people will think, oh my God, he's such a dictator like king that I can't stay here. Better I leave this place. <laughs> so the uh, for the... Uh, Leo ascendant, the planet Mars becomes very interesting. Mars is a yoke karaka, which means it rules a kendra and trikon, which means it helps the ascendant. At the same time, it is a sign of exaltation, which is fabulous, but it is also the badak, <laughs> which means Leos have to be very careful when to exert themselves and when not to. If they always keep exerting themselves, they'll be destroyed. And if they never exert themselves, then also they'll be destroyed because then sun will go to Libra. Yes. So, Leo Ascendants, their life is like a blade of, uh, what you say, razor sharp sword. Their life is like walking on a razor sharp sword. So, if they are a bit careless, like take the example of the king. King has to be perfect. Yes. If he's like, okay, let me give them allowance here. Then there will be thieves, rogues which will come. And then if he's like, no, they have done this, now kill them, slit their throat. And then also he's in trouble <laughs> because everybody will leave his kingdom. Nobody will want to stay there. So for Leo, it becomes like a very, uh, it becomes like a very peculiar uh, situation where they have to be in perfect harmony with Mars. Wherever they need punishment, they have to exert themselves. And whenever they don't need, they should be careful that they do not exert. All right. Otherwise, they will be the only one sitting in their throne. Everybody will leave them. And I know people who stay with Leo ascendants and they say, the best way to deal with the Leo ascendant is don't open your mouth because the moment you open your mouth they will say it's not going to work you have to listen to me all right so then nobody stays with you <laughs> so Leo ascendants be careful when you exert yourselves okay then we have Scorpio Scorpio 
what happens for scorpio we get the cancer sign in the ninth house yes and then what happens scorpio represents going inside things which actually nobody goes which requires a lot of effort lot of psychological baggage has to be cleaned yes that's the sign of scorpio and cancer represents pleasure luxury settlement sitting in one place and just and enjoying having a peaceful life so when cancer ascendants uh, sorry when scorpio ascendants are going on doing some level of research or going digging deep into something and at that time if they think oh let me relax let me chill out let me be complacent let me be patient no, not patient let me just enjoy life which is that typical cancer trait then uh, they cannot enjoy much <laughs> because their sense of enjoyment doesn't come from the fourth house that will come from the lagna yes that means they should always be focused in their research and going into things even if that involves uh, making sacrifices for their luxuries yes and for can uh, for scorpio this becomes even more important why because the mars the planet mars is not only having the badhak as cancer but it also has debilitation so for leo it is the opposite but for uh, for scorpio it is the opposite of leo you understand so cancer as for so for scorpio ascendants it's very good if they stay away from the sign of cancer <laughs> which does not mean that they should not take to spirituality yes because that is the house but we are talking of the sign here it simply means that they should not become complacent which is the planet moon yes and then we have which sign we have the sign of taurus which is another fixed sign and for taurus 2610 the sign in the ninth house again because it's a fixed sign so capricorn becomes badak taurus is what basically taurus is the sign of enjoyment luxury <laughs> and capricorn says what no 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 keep working all the time day and night you keep working so taurus ascendants if the only thing you are doing is working and you are never satisfied then you will never be able to enjoy because you will think oh why i am having this only na samsung i should have a iphone then you can never enjoy because then that will destroy your lagna because the sole purpose of taurus ascendants is to enjoy life yes <laughs> but the only thing you are doing is you are working 16 hours so that you want more 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 then what happens whatever you have that also you can't enjoy so it's like you are working to get something but you are not enjoying that sums up the story of people of today right <laughs> they are having thousands and millions of dollars so many people but they are not able to enjoy because they don't have time so taurus ascendants cool down chill out sit down and enjoy what you have don't just keep working 24 hours then we have aquarius again another fixed sign so aquarius represents the gain yes and again for them libra the ninth house is badha again ninth sign <laughs> i am again and again saying it's not the house is the sign all right that means whenever you are getting gains yes when you are you are progressing in life whenever you are getting money don't think how much libra is getting how much others are getting oh i got 10000 this person got 20000 then your life will be miserable just think of yourself don't think of others all right how much they are getting and then we have the dui swabhava rashis the dual signs which is gemini virgo Sagittarius and Pisces and for them the sign in the seventh house becomes Vadak not the seventh house the sign in the seventh house all right now this means that see the dual signs they are by nature dual <laughs> which means they are like they are like a paradox they think oh this is also good they think that is also good now this can be good and bad also they can see both the sides sometimes but they can lose focus in life you see that's where the problem comes now the seventh house is the house of other people and the sign there for a dual sign will also be another dual sign so imagine there's a ascendant okay suppose there is a gemini ascendant <laughs> now gemini are always dual yes because that's a dual sign they'll be like okay should i do this or should i do that so now their seventh house which is another dual sign imagine the the man marries and he gets a wife then as per that lagna the wife is also dual sign okay <laughs> now what the wife says the man is thinking should we go to london or should we go to paris then the wife says oh why london or paris why not decide between uh 
Delhi and Mumbai. So now we have four options you see. So earlier as if two options were less. Now again you have freaking four options. Which means you are just multiplying your confusion. Earlier you were confused between two and now you are confused between four. Yes. So for that you have to be very careful. And for Gemini the sign of Sagittarius is the Badha. Which means Gemini says yeah yeah be very flexible look this side and look that side also but Sagittarius says no no you have to see that is God and this is spirituality so Sagittarius sometimes Gemini can say that okay this is also right that is also right but Sagittarius says no this is completely right and that is completely wrong so both are dwell that way and similarly for Sagittarius Gemini becomes Badha because for Sagittarius Gemini will be in the seventh house and then Sagittarius has to clearly discriminate and distinguish and judge which is right and wrong. He have to be working on a binary scale. No, no, this is good, this is bad. But Gemini says, no, no, this is not very bad. It's okay to drink sometimes. <laughs> Who said drinking is bad? It's okay to drink sometimes, once in a while. Then, then if the Sagittarius thinks that, oh yeah, it's not that bad. You know, you can always drink sometimes. It's not that bad after all. It's okay to drink sometimes, right? So not a big deal, you see. So then the Sagittarius will be destroyed. Yes. And then you have uh, the sign Virgo. Yes, Virgo is very picky about details. And then for them, Pisces becomes the Bada. Because Pisces says, why are you too much obsessed about these details? Just see the broad picture. Now everything is good. There's nothing good or bad. And then the Virgo is like, my God, <laughs> what should I do? Yes. And similarly, for Pisces, Virgo becomes Bada. Because Pisces says, Oh, I am very broad. I am not very, I am very broad minded. I accept everybody. But Virgo says, no, 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 no. That person is your enemy. That person is your friend. Because Virgo is the original sixth house of enemies. So then the Pisces is like, oh my God, should I accept him or not? Because that, that person may be my friend or my enemy. Yes. So these are the reasons these planets or these houses or these zodiac signs, especially they are called Vadaks. Okay. Now you can have Badhaks for every house, which means if your Venus is sitting in the sign of Leo, suppose, yes, so then Aries for that Venus becomes Badhak because for Leo, the sign Aries is Badhak. So, whenever Venus is in Leo, be sure you do not exert too much rules, regulations, restrictions on your partner, then your partner will leave you. <laughs> Yes, because you are bringing the sign of Aries, which is the Badak sign, into the sign where Venus is placed. So that can create some difficulty in, in relationships. Okay. Similarly, if Jupiter is, in, uh, is placed in the sign of Taurus, then the sign Capricorn again becomes Badak for Jupiter. Yes. So Badak is there for every planet because everybody has planets placed in some sign or the other right so generally we study badhaks from the lagna but i am saying study the badhaks from every sign of sorry from every planet because then you will know what are the things that are causing the obstruction for this planet yes otherwise you will not know what is causing you the difficulty yes you will simply think oh my ascendant is in libra and my badhak is surya my badhak is the sign of leo but then maybe you don't have any planets in leo and libra then what suppose you have four planets in the sign of cancer then how will you know you see that that is how you distinguish so study the badhaks for every planet and take them as the center and from there you check if it is a dual sign the sign in the seventh house which is directly opposite is the badhak sign and if it is a fixed sign then the sign in the ninth house is the badhak and if it is a movable sign then the sign in the eleventh house is considered to be the badhak sign all right that is it from my side it has been a long video 25 minutes so if you like this video then click the thumbs up and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a personal consultation then approach me through the website and if you want me to make any other video, then let me know in the comments. Or if you have any other questions, queries or comments, then also put it there in the comment box. Okay. Until next time, wish you good luck with the study of Badaks. Okay. Good luck. Bye-bye. See you.